Hello, are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. I'm Ben Thompson. Last December I published a book in England, White Tulip, published by Smokestack Books. We didn't have a launch party in England because I was in Ireland and I had planned to promote the book by doing live readings in Ireland, but unfortunately all that has stopped now. So I'm following the trend and doing a little virtual launch. I'm going to read four poems from the book, which is here, White Tulip Smokestack Books. The first poem is called Litokovo, and this is in memoriam Major Frank Thompson, my father's elder brother. He was a liaison officer with a group of Bulgarian partisans and he was captured by the Nazis in Bulgaria and executed in June 1944. Fifty years after that, I went up to Litikovo for a little ceremony and then that was when this poem was written. Litikovo, in memoriam Frank Thompson. A bugle plays a last post. We lay flowers and for a moment are as still as you. Fifty years ago, you gave your life for something that I still can't find a name for. Does it matter? Only the deadened spirit needs to ask why one should give his whole life everything. The doing answers for itself. It seems a monument is sealed wherever youth stands upon honour until death, the touchstone of the real. Here no one comes, no flowers fade, time gathers dust over a soldier's grave. I stand within the shadows, knowing you are close, and are as well as I am when I sleep, knowing no more than you do when I'll wake. Next poem, on a slightly similar theme, was written in Beijing about 2004, I think. And it was sparked off by seeing a very small article saying that 10,000 soldiers had been obliterated in Kandahar. And I was just thinking, who were these boys? Did they know what they were fighting for? Did they have any choice uh, in fighting? How can 10,000 souls just be swept under the carpet of history just because they're soldiers? So this poem is called Soldiers and it's prefaced by an epigram of Simonides that he wrote for the Spartans who held the bridge at Thermopylae. Go tell the Spartans passers-by that here obedient to their wish we lie. I come to protest the deaths of soldiers, huddled in barracks, sweating in trenches, dragged from their farms or factories, a gun, a gas mask and a mess can, a khaki coat, you are no longer a man, you are a goalpost, a snooker pocket, a bullet through your brain, just use, a match point, a black potted. When exactly did you lose the right to live? When your call-up papers landed on the mat, or when they were put in the post? When your name was written into the lists, or when the midwife hauled you from the howling womb, looked between your legs and pronounced you man, guilty as charged? I will not waste time protesting the deaths of children, which is an industry, whole factories, industrial estates already thrive on. Every day whole forests are felled, whole oceans of synthetic tears are wet to dry for them. Their cute, muddy or preferably blood-stained faces are stacked in libraries back to back like celluloid corpses, are whisked off optical magnetic media, telegraphed at the speed of light. Every editor is hungry for more and each has their favourite. And I will not waste time protesting the deaths of women who are all innocent, even though year after year they go to the polls and vote first, second and third preference for death, death, death. Yet they miraculously remain innocent. Yes, it seems that no matter how much power they have to vote, to choose, no matter how punctually their demands must be fulfilled, their innocence astonishingly expands to cover all, like a pink blanket soft and warm, 
exhaling a faint whiff of TV dinners and contraceptive foam. Guilt lands on the shoulders of the soldier, a khaki doll. Wind him up and he'll crawl through hell. Tick, tock, regular as a clock. You, the customer, can choose mean look one or fierce look two. Did you ever see a frightened soldier doll? Guilt lands as white hot uranium splattered into his tank, as cluster bombs blowing off feet and arms. Ten thousand country boys blown to one column inch at Kandahar. Fear, pain and shit in his pants. Is that your finger on the trigger, brother, or mine? Is that your guilt on my shoulders, brother, or mine? And your name? Oh, really? I also am unknown. Today I want you to forget about innocence, about women, children and other icons whose deaths will still be there tomorrow to comfort you, who will keep you safely indignant for years to come. And spend just one day thinking about soldiers. Thank them for their age-old courtesy, their habit of not cluttering up your newspapers with their complaints, of not ringing your private telephones off the wall, but just quietly shuffling up the line, collecting a gun, a gas mask and a mess can, iron rations and an honorary doctorate in dying, and reflect that though there are indeed enemies, there are no enemy soldiers, so that the guilt may finally be lifted and their crushed souls rest in peace, in peace. The next poem, this was an elegy for my father who um, one day when the house was full of people asked my mother if he could go out and pick blackberries and went off actually in completely the opposite direction from the blackberry bush and lay down under his favourite magnolia tree and died. So this is called The Flower Arrangement for E.P. Thompson. According to thought, if the mass of an electron were changed by one part in 50 million, there would be no space, no stars, no water, no flesh, no magnolia, and none of this need ever have happened. So can we touch the ground of so much possibility, or must we always dream away from the dark as the price of being on loan from the impossible? For it is impossible, the dark. We can never go into it. We may go out in family groups to pick apples or strawberries. We can go gleaning in pairs, but only alone can the blackberry ever be tasted. So are we mere flames, and is all this just shadows? If it is, are there walls the shadows play upon? If so, what are they made of and why can't we see them? If not, how have we gone on fooling ourselves for so long? And if we are just flames dancing in darkness, does the walk to the magnolia tree take time or are we already there? Is it just a dream in the dark that lets us say, no, not us, not now. Here are apples to pick. There is time to walk in the grass together. There are birds, there are streams, there are flowers. Only one hand could have arranged this bouquet, set the black fruit against the green magnolia. There was a flower arranger here, skillfully working, cutting and planting with never a mark, save when someone misunderstood a carefully laid out frame or picked up a scythe that had gently been set down to rest. And though many can gather the laurel or pluck the early blooming rose, only the strong cut magnolia. Only the strong grasp the blackberry by the root, turn death about on his own doorstep, and say, there you old fool, I mastered you. I slipped your mask and showed your human face, and made of you a garland for the flames. Finally, a poem called Requiem. This poem commemorates a friend called Dennis Butt, who was a friend of the family, died when I was about 14. Around a quarter of a century later, a mutual friend came to the house where I was living in North London and told me that Dennis's grave was very near where I was living. So we went up together to find it and 
From that experience came this poem, Requiem, for Dennis Butt. I woke because it was morning and because a child came in. I woke then and found myself a man looking at a child who had come in bearing her inheritance, a child's freedom of morning. I was aware I touched a common thing, man looking at child with a frightening thing, selfhood. That I should be here, alive, looking at a child. The dead don't see this. Over us the flesh moves like moss upon stones. We are the river. Do we contradict the dead? We living, they dead. The dead looked at their children and had eyes of life. We look on our children and will have eyes of death. We and the dead look together through life, through death. But why seeing here, now? Who? After 24 years I came back to your grave. There were poems, music and oration. Four friends carried the box to a wild place under a tree. Unchanged the wild place, the tree. I left, moved, moved again, grew up, moved, had children. Moved again, almost to that place where all that time your face and hands and feet had lain. Your arms, your ribs, the heart which gave up on you were lying perfectly still. And the clouds rolled over your grave, and for all you could hear, I was a cloud rolling over your grave. I bent down to tell you about all who had come after, but you were right, there were clouds, they were gone. Even on a bright spring day, sleet and rain appear, the living come in from the cold, but the dead laid under trees, bare their chests to the rain, equally for the snow and the fingers of frost, their arms lie open in acceptance. We, the living, have decided that the dead shall bear the rain. They go out without complaining, as though suddenly become brave. In the vault, light breaks. In the vault, rain collects. The rain falls, catching the light which frowns out of the clouds like the eye of God, painting the child in the eye of the man. Light echoes between the objects of the universe, the ghost of matter painting the unreachable. All this light-painted world is not for the dead. Are they any more wrong than we are? Having lived and loved, they lie quietly under the flowers, not disturbing us with non-existence accepting not our memories, nor the remnants of love, but the long cold rain as light perpetual. White Tulip, Ben Thompson, Smokestack Books. Thank you.